One of my favorite parts about being a chef, being a cook on Prince Edward Island is of course our potatoes. And there's so many different things you can do with those potatoes and I've done them all. I've made french fries, mashed, smashed, potato salad, home fries, hash browns, oven roast, baked, twice baked, steamed and fried. But of all the possible ways to cook a potato, of all the different things that I've ever done with a potato, without question, my favorite is a potato bacon cheddar tart. So my goal is to take that recipe and just release it to the world and so that everybody can try the most amazing way to enjoy potatoes. Potato bacon cheddar tart. Previously on Food Country, here's everything you need to make a potato bacon cheddar tart. Now this is the kind of dish that at first glance seems pretty complicated and the first time you make it it may seem like holy cow what have I gotten myself into. But it's also the kind of dish that you'll impress yourself in your own kitchen. And it will work the first time. And the second time, you'll have it mastered. And trust me, you'll be making it a second time. First thing you need is a pan, a standard saute pan. Now, I'm going to fill this pan with bacon and then layers of potatoes and cheddar cheese and then wrap the bacon around the potato. So one of the keys is to make sure that the bacon doesn't stick. And that's what parchment paper is for. Start, fold it in half, then in half again, and just keep folding around this point. And again, folding around the same point, one more time, and then fit it into the pan. And voila. Of course, the paper doesn't really want to stick to the pan, so quick light coating of oil. Hey, where are you go? <laughs> My potatoes are running away. When was the last time you got to use two pounds of bacon to make anything? You just know this is going to taste good. Lining the pan with bacon is an absolutely key step because you need to have a single layer of bacon covering the entire thing, but not four or five layers, which means you've got to be careful how you do the center. Watch this. So the first piece starts in the center, goes right out to the edge, overlaps the pan. Then the second piece comes in and alternate the ends, flip it around, touch the center, just barely overlap the first piece and carry on, alternating as you go. Now if you're not careful, you'll end up with this big fat wad of bacon in the very center of the pan. So another trick is to slightly offset every other slice. Here's what I mean. Then the next one goes all the way into the center. And the next one flips over and doesn't quite go all the way to the center. So on and so forth. Carrying on until the whole pan is lined with bacon. At this point, I, I like to just look at it. I mean, it's not every day I get to see two pounds of bacon laid out this way. But take a closer look. There's a couple of key points here. I mean, the bottom line is that you want a single layer of bacon covering the bottom of that pan and not a big fat mound in the center. Every single one of these slices of bacon 
points directly at the center. But if every piece went to the center, you'd end up with this big fat center. And you don't want that. So it's a piece of cake. Really, this isn't that big a deal. You'll nail this the first time you try it. So on to the potatoes. Now you've got some choices when it comes to potatoes. We've got white boiling potatoes, low starch. We've got red potatoes, also low starch. And we've got standard baking potatoes, high starch. High starch is your best choice. This will help the potato tart hold together. The next step is to slice these as thinly as you possibly can. You don't need to peel them, but you do need to slice them very, very thinly. But don't worry, if you can't slice as thinly as a chef can, this is going to work just fine. Big, thick chunks work too. Now don't obsess about this too much because you're never going to actually see the inside of the tart. So this beautiful radial pattern doesn't really matter so much as a, just a thin, even layer of potatoes. One thin, even layer of potatoes followed by salt and pepper and cheddar cheese. There are a lot of different cheeses you can use to make this tart. Parmesan works well, Gruyere works well, basically harder, firmer, melting cheeses. But in particular, I like cheddar cheese. Cheddar always goes with potatoes. And I find that the more aged the cheddar cheese, the better it works. Because aged cheddar cheese is just a little bit firmer. So that's the basic idea. Layers of potato, layers of cheddar cheese, all covered up with bacon. It simply doesn't get any better than this. Here's a tip. It helps to save the smallest slices for the very center. Big slices on the outside. Now keep in mind that the potatoes will shrink as they cook, so it's a good idea to mound them well above the top of the bacon and as you go to sort of tuck them in a little bit. So the last few layers don't go all the way out to the edge, they begin to tuck in. Then simply fold all that bacon right back over the top. But as the bacon cooks, it tends to shrink a little bit and curl, so a good idea is to put a weight on it. Anything's fair game, a plate or a small pot lid, anything at all to just weigh down that bacon and keep those ends from curling up and pulling away from each other. This is basically ready to go in the oven now. But it's a good idea to put it on a tray because that bacon is going to throw off quite a bit of fat and you don't want that fat bubbling out into the bottom of the oven, so just sit it on a tray. Now, normally that would take about two and a half hours at 350 degrees, but this isn't normally. This is the web where anything can happen. And I've got one of those top secret television ovens, so check this out. I love this oven. It's not often that you see perfection in the kitchen, but that's what it looks like right there. Potato, bacon, cheddar tart. <laughs>